Hey skincare nerds, welcome back. So today we're going in depth into facial oils and helping you figure out if you need one in your routine. We're gonna go beyond the marketing to figure out are they even good for your skin? Whether you have oily skin, dry skin, or you're concerned about breakouts, we're gonna go deep and compare different oils to help you figure out which one is the best one for your skin. Let's get into it. Before we start, let's thank Three Shifts for sponsoring this video. I've gotten a few requests from you guys for more cruelty-free and vegan products. So if you love a good natural skincare product that's also animal friendly, that's Three Shifts specialty. Not only are they vegan and cruelty-free, they're sustainability focused and transparency is core to their mission. They're also female founded and more affordable compared to other premium natural brands. So check them out. You can find them at threeshipsbeauty.com or at Target. Save 20% on Three Ships Beauty with code Kathy on Skincare 20 right here. Okay, back to the oils. So what even is a facial oil? Well, they can be pure plant oils like rosehip, essential oils like lavender, synthetic like mineral oil, or they can be a blend of all of those. They can also pop up as an ingredient in your moisturizers and cleansers, but today we're focusing on plant oil-based serums. So are they actually beneficial for your skin or is it just marketing hype? What does the science say? Well, there really aren't that many large studies proving facial oil skin benefits. However, since oils contain omega fatty acids and vitamins which are well studied, we're assuming oils can provide similar benefits to those individual ingredients. What are those benefits? <laughs> They're really moisturizing, so they help to improve skin hydration and seal that moisture in. They're repairing and protective as well. They help to repair your skin barrier if it's been overstripped from harsh cleansers, over exfoliation or medication like tretinoin and also acts as a protective layer creating an occlusive barrier. They're multifunctional. They can be a great base for makeup, helping it glide over fine lines. And for those of you with beards, it helps to soften that facial hair as well. They might have some other skin benefits too, like regulating sebum production. Sebum, by the way, is just a fancy word for the natural oil in your skin. They also have anti-aging potential. There haven't been that many studies on this, but there was a small one comparing a group of 60 women applying argan oil to their skin versus eating olive oil. The results showed the group that applied it had significantly improved skin elasticity after 60 days, while the group eating olive oil actually showed no improvement at all. However, not all facial oils are equal. Kind of like how not all wine and not all coffee are of the same quality. Comparing one rosehip oil to another is kind of like comparing one wine or coffee to another. A lot of different factors can affect its quality, like where it's grown, growing conditions, age of the plant, and how it's extracted and process as well. Choose a cold pressed oil when you can since they haven't been heated or distilled and that helps to retain its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties. Make sure you do the brand research on the oil you get because there can be so much variability with a natural product, especially if you're gonna go with a higher end oil, you really wanna get your money's worth. Okay, so now how do we figure out if oils are right for your skin? Well, there are oils that are great for every every skin type, but you have to make sure you're using the right one. Here are some things to think about. If you're worried an oil will clog your pores, start with its comedogenicity rating. The rating ranges from zero to five, with zero being least likely to clog pores, while five is most likely to cause clogging. So if you're acne prone, I'd avoid oils like coconut and flaxseed since these have much higher comedogenicity ratings. There are issues with relying only on comedogenicity ratings though, since it can can be really inconsistent, but it's still a good starting point. Second, texture. So this one's way more straightforward. If you have oilier skin, look for a lighter oil that absorbs faster, but if you have drier skin, look for a heavier oil that's occlusive and is a bit slower to absorb. Third, linoleic versus oleic acid levels. Okay, so this is where we nerd out. Oils are made up of fatty acids like linoleic and oleic acid. And the amount of the two in the oil is really important in figuring out if it's right for you or not. Linoleic 
acid, aka omega-6, isn't naturally produced by our bodies. It's lightweight and has a thin consistency. It absorbs really easily, so it will be better if you have oilier skin. And if you're acne prone, there's a theory that high percentage linoleic acid oils could actually help to control acne. How? Studies have found acne prone skin tends to lack enough linoleic acid, making your sebum feel thick and sticky, which can then lead to clogged pores and breakouts. Since our bodies can't produce linoleic acid naturally, it's thought applying linoleic acid will help balance sebum production and thin it out, making it less likely to clog, so reducing acne formation. Oleic acid, aka omega-9, on the other hand, is naturally produced by our bodies and found in our sebum. Oleic acid gives your skin a rich and kind of heavier consistency. It's very moisturizing, so if you have dry or mature skin, you should look for an oil with higher levels of oleic acid. But if you have acne prone or oilier skin, you're naturally more likely to have higher levels of oleic acid, so avoid oils high in oleic acid. Now we know what kind of oil to look for, let's go deep into a few different oils, starting with one that's great for all skin types, rosehip oil. Rosehip is a really popular option because it's good for oily, combo, dry, balanced, sensitive, and mature skin too. It's an ultra-effective emollient and moisturizer. It's got high levels of essential fatty acids, which helps soften your skin and improve its barrier function. Plus, it's high in linoleic acids, has anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties, and has a low comedogenicity rating, which can be helpful if you're acne prone or you have oily skin. It's also got provitamin A and a small amount of tretinoin in it, which are powerful antioxidants that can help reduce the look of fine lines, scars, and pigmentation over time. So for a recommendation on rosehip oil, I really love the Boost 49% Rosehip Oil Serum by Three Ships Beauty, which is a blend of rosehip oil and grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is another lightweight oil that's also non-comedogenic and has high linoleic acid content, so another oily and acne pro skin friendly option. It's also what gives it that greener tint to it. It's also got vitamin E in it, which is an antioxidant, but its main function in the formula is actually as a natural preservative. So it helps boost its shelf life, keeping it fresh for longer. It does smell floral and kind of sweet because it does have geranium oil in it, which I actually really, really like because my skin isn't sensitive to essential oils, but if you are, you should be cautious with any product with essential oils in it. So as for the texture, it's really lightweight and thin. You can see it dripping down my hand. Do you see it running? So it is really, really light. It really doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything at all and it just leaves like a really nice, lightly glowing finish. As for the packaging, I really like that everything except the dropper can be recycled, but ideally it would be packaged in a darker bottle to help maintain its shelf life. It'll still be good for six months though if you do store it somewhere cool and dark. Okay, let's move on to jojoba oil, which is great if you have balanced combo or oily skin. Skincare nerd fact, jojoba oil isn't even even technically an oil at all. It's actually a wax ester. You can find wax esters on the outside of plant leaves, giving the plant environmental protection. Did you know that 25 to 30% of human sebum is also wax esters to give us environmental protection too? Being a wax ester is actually great for a couple of reasons. First, it's extremely stable. So even if you heat jojoba oil to 370 degrees Celsius or 698 degrees Fahrenheit for 96 hours, Hours, it still won't go bad. That's unlike most natural skincare that tend to have shorter shelf lives. Second, it's got a similar molecular structure and composition to sebum. So jojoba oil mimics your skin's sebum and helps to balance out oilier and dry areas, making it really good for combo skin types like my skin. Sebum also naturally coats your hair, so applying jojoba oil to it can make your hair feel softer and look shinier. Jojoba oil is also lightweight, non-comedogenic, and high in linoleic acid, making it suitable for oilier skin. For a really good jojoba oil option that's really moisturizing without being greasy, I love, love, love the Three Ships Glow 49% Jojoba Oil Serum, which is great for me since, again, I have combo skin. As you guys can see, I'm already 
already halfway through this bottle. So it's a blend of jojoba oil and camellia oil in it as well as vitamin C as that preservative boost. Camellia oil is amazing as well. It's packed with antioxidants and it's great for helping to retain moisture and penetrates really deeply into your skin. It's also got an incredibly similar composition to sebum. This one is fainter smelling than the rosehip one and also lighter with kind of like florally citrusy notes because there is bergamot oil in it. But again, be cautious with this if you are sensitive to essential oils. So as for the texture of this one, it's also really lightweight and thin. Let's do the drip test. Yep, you can see that it it's quite runny, but it also absorbs extremely quickly and leaves like a really very glowy, non-greasy finish. You also only need to apply one to two drops with this one. A little bit goes a long way, so it's helpful that its shelf life is also stable for up to a year. Next up, try squalene oil if you have combo, dry, or sensitive skin. Quick skincare nerd fact, Squalene is a hydrogenated form of squalene with an E, which is a component of sebum. That hydrogenation process makes squalene more stable than squalene, so it's got a longer shelf life. Squalene has great emolliency, creates a nice protective barrier preventing trans epidermal water loss, and has a great texture. So basically, it's an awesome moisturizer that makes your skin nice and smooth without feeling heavy or greasy. I actually recommend it in my slugging video as an eco-friendly alternative to Vaseline. Research also suggests squalane isn't likely to cause irritation, so it's a good option for sensitive skin. But as always, be mindful of other ingredients that could be lurking in a squalane product if you have sensitive skin. If you're acne prone though, be cautious. So even though squalane has a low comedogenicity rating and is also lightweight, some early research suggests squalene with an E when it's oxidized plays a role in the formation of acne. Squalane is also Obviously not the same as squalene, but I wanted to flag that for you guys just in case. So if you are gonna try a squalane oil, make sure it comes from a plant-based source like olive because historically it was derived from shark liver. The good thing is that most squalane in the US today is plant-based. A few good options I really like are from Biosance, The Inculus, and The Ordinary. Moving on to almond oil, which is great if you have dry skin. If you're looking for a simple oil that is going to help soften, nourish, and hydrate your dry skin, almond oil is it. It's high in oleic acid, making it a rich and emollient moisturizer. It's also really useful for treating dry, brittle nails. And if stretch marks are a concern for you, it might actually be helpful in treating them according to the results of one small study. Almond oil is also antioxidant rich with high levels of vitamin E, magnesium, phosphorus, and copper. It seems like almonds might also give you an extra boost of sun protection. One promising study done on mice showed almond oil might help to protect skin from the sun, while another showed eating almonds daily might lead to increased sun protection. By the way, that doesn't mean you can skip sunscreen entirely and only apply almond oil and eat almonds, but adding it to your routine with a sunscreen as well might help to boost that sun protection. But of course, if you do have a nut allergy, do not use almond oil. For a product recommendation, I like the Three Shifts Hydrate 49% Almond Oil Serum. I like to use it on the areas where I get really dry, like my ankles, shins, and my elbows as well. And I think this will be really great for me in the winter. It also has pumpkin seed oil in it too, and again, that vitamin E acting as a natural preservative. Pumpkin seed oil is also antioxidant rich and high in vitamin E and zinc, making it great for moisture retention and fighting free radicals. The high levels of zinc also help to improve your skin tone. Since almond oil has a slower skin absorption rate, it's best if you apply it on its own instead of mixing it. So let's check it out. So first, it does smell quite lavendery because there is that added lavender essential oil in it. And as for the texture, let's do the drip test. So you can see that it's slower to drip down than the others. And this one won't absorb in as quickly, which makes it much more moisturizing and occlusive. Again, a little bit goes a long way with this one. I only use two drops here. That's more than enough. And this one also has a shelf life of one year. Okay, so now that we've gone through four different oils in depth, how do you apply it? 
My number one tip for applying is do not go too heavy. One to two drops for your face is more than enough. A little bit will definitely go a long way. A bottle can last you months. So I like to just drop it onto my clean hands to warm it up to body temperature. Then I would just pat it in. Using my hands makes it much easier to control where I apply it. So a big question I know some of you have is how do you apply facial oils and moisturizers? Do you need both? Well, the answer really depends on how much moisture you need. You can use it instead of a moisturizer if you don't need as much added moisture, or if you have dehydrated or dry skin, you can use it under a moisturizer to add more moisture and prevent trans epidermal water loss. You can also mix one to two drops into your moisturizer or to a water-free serum like an l acid vitamin C serum to give you a bit of a glow. Or you can use it as a highlighter for your cheeks and just pat it in for a nice little highlight. I would recommend one of the lighter oils for that, like jojoba oil or a rosehip, because you don't want a slower absorbing one to stick to your hair if you've got long hair. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of that, do you need an oil in your routine? Oils are amazingly moisturizing. They soften your skin, provide a protective barrier, and help prevent trans epidermal water loss. They can also provide a bunch of other benefits as well, depending on the type of oil and how much linoleic acid versus oleic acid content is in it. Overall, rosehip oil is really great for all skin types, while jojoba oil is great if you have balanced combo or oilier skin, since it's got a higher level of linoleic acid. But if you have combo, dry, or sensitive skin, then try squalane oil. And if you have dry skin, try an almond oil. But one thing that's for sure with natural oils is that you have to make sure to patch test even if you've used that type of oil before. Natural ingredients have much more variability than lab synthesized ones and can sometimes vary from batch to batch or brand to brand. All right, so that's it from me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if it was, don't forget to give your girl a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more informative and fun skincare videos like this one. Thanks 3Ships for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my coupon Kathy on Skincare 20 to save 20% on 3shipsbeauty.com. Love you guys. See you next time.